And we are back on Morning Line. Thanks for joining us with us this morning. Uh, Republican strategist uh, Steve Gill. We're talking about DACA ends, what happens next, and getting a take. Uh, you were saying, you know, about the folks who were upset with what the president did. Want all or nothing in your mind. And you're, you're saying they're not going to get that. Yeah, the, the DACA advocates want, you know, complete amnesty, and that is not going to go. That's not going to fly with the base. Uh, frankly, they lost that argument in the election. I mean, places like Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, where blue-collar workers listen to Trump on, we're going to secure the border, we're going to bring jobs back here, we're going to get higher wages here, and bringing in illegals lowers wages and takes jobs from Americans. Uh, you've got about 25% unemployment still among African-American males. Don't you think that base, political base in the United States, might like to get some jobs and like to get to some higher paying jobs. We saw this summer because of increased enforcement, more Americans were getting jobs and wages went up in part because you're not having to compete with people who were here illegally. And I think the last caller hit it right on the head. You've got two sides that are really the problem here. You've got those who are absolute advocates for illegal open borders who are pushing this. And then you've got the business chamber of commerce types who want to be able to pay people very low wages and make bigger profits because they've essentially got slave labor workers and people who can't complain because if you're here illegally mm -hmm. and you complain about work conditions they can threaten to deport you they can threaten to turn you into ice that is an intolerable situation and again you're only going to fix that if you fix the entire immigration issue let's go to grady grady good morning good morning uh, hey. nick you know uh me and steve never have agreed on anything <laughs> but i gotta go along with him on this thing i think uh you okay, know i may be wrong then <laughs> so i <laughs> And we, we, we were kicked all over the, the states, you know, and grandmother lived in the teepee and Smithville in the, in the reservation. But, you know, i tell you what, uh, DACA, you know, uh, not to commit a crime, you know, I had a grandson driving down the road, had a car, and all of a sudden this Mexican hit him, he's hit and run. So, you know, I mean, we're going to protect these people, give them rights that they should not have, and and I'll hang up with y'all's comments this morning. All right, thank you, Brady. Yes, sadly, there are about 3,000 people a year who are murdered by illegal aliens. We've seen the Cape Steinley case. We've seen others. About 3,000 a year, and about another 3,000 a year are killed in drunk driving accidents by illegals. We have two 9-11s a year because of those who are in this country illegally. Now, some people will argue, yeah, but you're going to have drunk driving incidents. You have Americans. I mean, look at Chicago. People are shooting and killing people every day. But these could be prevented if they weren't here. And it's a matter of do you enforce your laws? Do the laws matter? Um, you know, these folks that are coming in from other countries, some are bringing good skills and good talents. They ought to be in line. They ought to follow the rules. And we do allow a lot of legal immigration into this country, we ought to control it. We ought to know how many people we need to have in the country and not have people just simply sneak in, break in, and then expect us to take care of them. Let's go to Linda. Linda, good morning. Hi, Linda. Oh, hi. How hey. you doing? Good. Go ahead. Well, I was listening. The lady, you know, said something a while ago that, um, you know, about the race and everything. I feared that something would be brought up about that. But it's not all about that. It's about, you know, people coming here illegal is what I think. And, you know, getting the same benefits we get on different things. And, and I didn't understand about the college thing. If, if they're not making that much money, then how can they get college, you know, give to them? Well, if, again, oh, when you've got different. grants and you've got scholarships, and again, when you're giving a break to, to those who are here illegally, getting in-state tuition, um, which again, Tennessee taxpayers subsidize, Tennessee taxpayers pay for, versus, you know, you've got American citizens who are paying full out-of-state tuition in Tennessee colleges and universities. I think there's just a sense of fairness that we ought to stop putting American citizens at the back of the line and, and start looking out for Americans when it comes to creating jobs, treating people fairly, applying the rules of the law, fairly to everybody and not allowing some groups and some individuals to get special treatment simply because um, they've got a loud vocal advocacy group behind them. And you know we've touched on different points but how how much do you think the average American truly is really suffering because of illegal immigration? Because you know what? I don't think it's really killing me. And well, I don't think it's really killing you. It, so I'm just curious and there are some maybe that feel like your son can't get into college or isn't get but honestly and especially when we know the numbers are down of immigrants coming across the border and that's a fact so how much is it really hammering us right now i'm curious how big an issue is it i know people like to talk about it but compared to a lot of other stuff like health care and tax reform and all that how 
big an issue in your mind, is it? Well, I think we could ask Kate Steinle's parents. I think we could ask um, some of the angel moms that you saw during the campaign with Donald Trump, whose children have been killed by illegals. Uh, we talk about the dreamers. What about the dreams of those whose son or daughter or husband, uh, in many cases, even border security or police officers, who've been killed by people who are illegals, who in many cases have been caught, deported numbers of times, and then keep coming back until they finally kill somebody. About 3,000 of the dreamers, and this is the, quote, good ones that have been vetted, supposedly, about 3,000 of the dreamers have, have lost their dreamer status because they've created serious um, criminal violations. Many of them are parts of these MS-13 gangs. They are not all good college attending, you know, professionals. I mean, that's what's kind of being, you know, propagandized in the media right now. Uh, more than half of the dreamers don't have a high school education. Uh, more than half of them are over age 22. They're not seven and eight year old children the way it's being portrayed. So I think when you look at what is the actual truth about this group, much less the broader eight to 11 million others who are not here legally and who have not been brought here by their parents, we've got a big problem and the only way you're going to deal with it is to stop the inward flow of illegals, deal with those who are already here illegally who are, again, working and taking jobs. Uh, again, this summer we saw companies hire more Americans, so it might not affect you or I. Mm -hmm. They're not you know, putting a dreamer in your spot, mm -hmm. but there are plenty of folks that are working in factories and places like Michigan feel who are being losing displaced. their job, or they're seeing the entire factory move to Mexico, right. which is one of the reasons, again, why you saw Donald Trump carry places like Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, where they are feeling yeah, the pain. And one of his big things is bringing the businesses back here. All right, let's go to uh, Charlie. Charlie, good morning. Good morning, Nate. Hey, Charlie, go ahead. Yeah, I've got a, just a little thing I want to tell you. Okay. And all this immigration stuff. Yeah. I was there, my wife and I was driving down the road one day, and she thought I went into kind of a out of coma or something, but really I was seeing something. I was seeing all these, all these people coming across the border from ISIS, and they were going to Washington, D.C., and a former president was giving them positions in the government. So that's what really they ought to look at to start with. Now, Trump is already doing it. I know he's getting rid of a lot of stuff like that. And I thank him for it, but yeah, you know, that's my issue on the thing. We all look first at what happened before all these people coming across the border. All right, thank you. Let's go to Peter. Peter, good morning. Hey, good morning, Nick. Hi, Peter. I'd just like to thank Mr. Gill for uh, injecting a little intelligence in the conversation and dealing with facts. You know, two guests yesterday <laughs> used an awful lot of emotion, and we're a country of laws, not emotion. But anyway. Uh, you know, I remember that when the Democrats stood for border security, you know, and I campaigned for Bill Clinton back when I was a Democrat in those days. But, uh, you know, without an agreement on the parts of the Democrats, which I don't think we'll get, I don't think we should do anything for DACA. I really don't. And I, I urge everybody out there that's an independent like me or a Republican to call call their representatives and urge them to vote against anything that doesn't include immigration reform, E-Verify, border security, all these things. You know, we remember, I remember Donald, uh, not Donald, uh, President Reagan with his amnesty program. He urged that we instill border uh, security at that time and nothing ever happened. They got the amnesty, we got 11 million more illegal immigrants. We have to put a stop to illegal immigrants. So anyway, thanks again, Mr. Gill, and I urge everybody out there to vote, to call their representatives, you know, regardless of what side you're on. Thanks. All right, Peter. You know, I think the, the political issue here is important. The last time that you had the Gang of Eight, you had Washington try to deal with the illegal immigration with this comprehensive reform. Marco mm -hmm. Rubio was at the front of that pack. Um, they came up short, and that's when President Obama did DACA as a, quote, temporary relief, mm -hmm. hoping that Congress would, would come back and, and find a way to deal with it. During the campaign, Donald Trump made dealing with illegal immigration, building a wall. I mean, that was one of the most oh, off one almost. things. Oh, yeah. Clearly, that had a big role in why he was elected and why he won. Well, when you go back to 2013, when they did not get 
comprehensive reform done. They tried to push amnesty through. The Democrats failed and they lost 10 seats in the U.S. Senate trying to get amnesty. Well, now you've got Republicans who have 10 states where Democrat senators are up for re-election next year mm -hmm. in states where Donald Trump won. You've got five of those states where he won by double digits. There is no real reason for Donald Trump to go with amnesty when he can win 10 more de Democrat Senate seats, just like Republicans did earlier, on this issue. So the idea that there's not going to be a negotiation resolution mm -hmm. is if Democrats want to lose more seats, give mm -hmm. Donald Trump more power, then they ought to stick with what they're doing, which is an all or nothing mm -hmm. pitch. That's why I think you're going to see some Democrats yeah. finally come to the table and say, look, something is better than nothing. Yeah, I, I would just love to see everyone get together to work something out on immigration reform on both sides. Listen, we'll take a break. We'll be back with more of your calls in our final segment right after this. Stay with us.